The cows have gone far away. The day is almost over and we are not able to go anywhere. Your mother is looking out for you. Yet here you are with tear-filled eyes and lowered head quietly rolling on the ground. We can also not remain alive anymore. The cows have gone far away. The day is almost over. And we are not able to go anywhere. Your mother is looking out for you. Yet here you are, with tear-filled eyes and a lowered head, quietly rolling on the ground. We can also not remain alive anymore. After describing Krishna's anxious words to his friends, Shripada now describes the cowherd boy's reply to Krishna in this verse. Krishna has become so agitated from Shrimati's glances that he starts rolling on the ground and crying. Subala and other friends pacify him in different ways as described in Krishna Bhavanamrita. On the way, the Rasika Mituna the amorous couple became stunned. Seeing this, Lalita and her girlfriends actually took Radhika on her way back home. And Subala and his friends took Krishna back home, consoling them to keep them from fainting by saying, as soon as the sun goes down, you'll be able to meet each other again. But today, none of the consultations of Subala and his friends are successful. Krishna keeps on crying with a grey face. What a wonderful power Radhika's love has on the self-delighted, self-satisfied, transcendental Lord Krishna. In Brihad Bhagavata Amrita, it is seen that when Krishna first saw his newly arrived devotee Gopakumar 
during his Uttara Goshta Lila. He tightly embraced him and then fainted of ecstasy. This sight caused all the cowherders, cowherd girls, cows, birds and beasts of Rajan to cry of sorrow and concern over Krishna. Finally, Baladev removed all the sorrow of the Vrajavasis by bringing Krishna back to consciousness. Seeing Krishna's condition, the cowherd boys who have given their hearts to him anxiously cry out, O oh friend, the cows have gone far away, the day is almost over, and we also don't know what to do anymore. Your mother is looking out for you and is very worried about you. Alas, you are simply staying here without saying anything. How can we still stay alive after seeing you in this condition? Quickly, save our lives by coming back to your senses. This description of the coward boy's lamentations shows how deep the boat of Krishna's heart had sunk, <clears throat> had sunk into the deep Rasa ocean of Radhika's endless love for him. This ends the verse 229. We are reading verse 230. Orade. Make the jewel of Raja eager to enjoy you by wearing a bright and beautiful new pearl on the tip of your nose. By making gestures that are like beautiful waves of amorous pastimes. And with your beautiful breasts that are covered by a blouse with pictures and shining jewels. O Radhe, make the jewel of Raja eager to enjoy you by wearing a bright and beautiful new pearl on the tip of your nose, by making gestures that are like beautiful waves of amorous pastimes, and with your beautiful breasts that are covered by a blouse with pictures and shining jewels. Confidential prayers of the maidservant. Sri Pala 
has a very clear vision of this Uttara Goshta Pastam. In the previous verse, he described how the coward boys lamented over being unable to console their friend Krishna. Now, Krishna finally comes back to his senses and returns home with Subala and his friends. Meanwhile, Shimati is very much worried about Mohana, and in a bewildered state, she falls in her Saki's lap. The Sakis then console her by telling her that Krishna is feeling better now and that he is going home. Still, Srimati breathes deeply, making her nose pearl that is tied to a golden string dangle under her nose. <coughs> if there is no gold under Radhika's nose, it could be inauspicious for her not beloved. Therefore, this golden string is very dear to Swamini. And it looks very beautiful Suruchi to her and to her maid servants. The nose pearl is made of Mahabhava because of contact with the Mahabhava touchstone Shiradika. It is said in Govinda Lidamrita. How has the pearl on Radhika's nose become black and red like kuncha beads? Ignorant poets say it is a reflection of her black eyeliner above it and her red lipstick shining under it. But I think that the red color represents her passionate love for Krishna and the black color represents Krishna himself. These colors come out when Radhika breathes out through her nose and this breath colors her nose pearl. That is why this pearl looks so beautiful to the Sakis and Mandarins. All these items are meant to make Krishna relish amorous pleasure. Radhika's body floats on waves of amorous gestures and activities just to please her Mohana. He now proceeds home and Shrimati begins to suffer the consequent separation. So the maid servant consoles her by saying, 
Hey darling, make your lover the jewel of Raja, eager for you by showing him the beauty of your breasts that are covered by your bodice which is embroidered 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 with different shining pearls and which has different pictures on the top The maid servant knows exactly how exciting this sight is to Vraja Mani. He will not be able to leave her side. By calling Krishna Vraja Mani, the maid servant says, He is the desired treasure of everyone here in Raja. The delectable sweetness and beauty of his names, forms and qualities steals everyone's heart. But Radhika's beauty will make Raja Mani forget everything and everyone. In this way, the maid servant always desires Radhika's happiness. Blessed is this maid servant. Blessed is her expertise in devotional service. He Radhe Raja Nandini O Princess Radhe Swarnojvala Thakurani Nasagran Mautika Saushobhini He Ananga Ranga Kele, Lalita Taranga Vali, Nana Bhangi Lila Tarangini. O Princess Radhi, O brightly golden goddess, who is beautified by a pearl, on the tip of the nose. O oh, you who makes lovely waves of amorous plays and various gestures on the river of your pastimes. Rabodananda says, Make this Raja Mani desire you by showing him your breasts that are covered by a wonderful bodice shining with jewels. Thus ends verse 230. Yeah. One more. There is a difference between Krishna's consoling and friends <laughs> and great servants and singer. Strong difference. Sri Radhi Sri
We are reading verse 231. When will I laugh? When I see how hard it is for Radharani to maintain her peak towards Krishna. Although she had firmly sworn that she would not look at him anymore, she repeatedly looks at him from the corners of her eyes. Although she had firmly sworn that she would not speak to him anymore. She tells him, go back to that other girl. And although she had firmly sworn that she wouldn't touch him anymore, she takes him out of the kunja, holding his hand. When will I laugh? When I see how hard it is for Radha to maintain her peak towards Krishna. Although she had firmly sworn that she would not look at him anymore, she repeatedly looks at him from the corners of her eyes. Although she had firmly sworn that she wouldn't speak to him anymore, she tells him, go back to that other girl And although she had firmly sworn that she wouldn't touch him anymore, she takes him out of the kunja, holding his hands. The weakness of Shiradika's peak. Once, Shiradika had waited the whole night for Mohana to come to her kunja. But he showed up only the next morning with clear signs of Chandravali's lovemaking on his body. The Sakis tell her, Radhe, how many times do you have to suffer the pain of mana again and makes, uh, make us suffer along with it? As soon as he leaves, you will suffer from regret and disappointment again. Your mana is so weak and temporary. Shimati replies, Friends, today I promise you that I will give up my relationship with this rascal for good. I will never look at his face anymore as long as I live. I will never speak with him anymore and I will never touch him anymore. 
friends, you must help me to keep these three vows. The Sakis reply, Rade, we are your friends, for better or for worse. We have always told you that if you fall in love with the sky, you will cry forever. But then, you didn't listen to us because you thought he looked so sweet and so beautiful. That is why you are suffering so much now. If you can give up this affair with him, you can still find some peace in your life. You won't have to burn in the fire of agony anymore. And your peace will be our peace also. But will you be able to do it? How many times haven't you been angry with him? And how many times didn't you swear that you would give up your relationship with him? Still, after some time, you become unsteady and begin to cry after him again. If you stand firm this time, then we will be here to help you. Shimati replies, Friends, I have learned my lessons well, lesson well now. I offer my obeisances to him from a distance. Now, I will give up my relationship with him. For good, you should never speak to me about him anymore. After saying this, Shrimati sat down and pulled her veil over her lowered face. Mohana hears everything from a short distance and tells the Sakis with some clever gestures. Friends, if you help me a little, I can make her break all three of these vows in no time. The Sakis, who are always in for some fun, Make a hint to Krishna, meaning, if you can do that, we will be willing to help you wherever it is necessary. Seeing this fun, the maidservant float in an ocean of rasa. The sakis whisper to each other in such a way that Radhika can hear it although they pretend to try to keep it a secret for her. Aha! How beautiful is Nagara's threefold bending form! How wonderful is his sweetness! Surely, the life of any girl who does not see this sweetness is wasted. Hearing the Saki's words, Shrimati thinks to herself, I have tasted Krishna's sweetness my whole life long. But the thirst of my eyes has never been quenched. His beauty is fresh 
at every moment. My friends are right. My life is useless if I don't look at him for just a moment. I swore to my girlfriends that I will not look at him anymore. But if I don't look at him, at least for a moment, then I cannot live anymore. I will have to peek at him once, when my suckies don't notice it. Thinking this, Shimata quickly peeks once at Mohana. But as soon as she sees him, she has to look again and again. Swamini's eyes and mind drown in Mohana's sweetness. The Sakis notice it, of course, and they say, Hey, Rade, you looked at him. Just see, you broke your vow. Shimati says, Friends, I told you from the beginning that I won't be able to do it without your help. How can I not look at him while you are describing his sweetness to each other like that? The Sakis reply, Look, Rade, why should you listen to our discussions? Why are you so restless? You should become more strong. Anyway, one vow is gone. You have two vows left over. Keep them well. Mohana now winks to the Sakis. Just watch. I'm going to ruin her other two vows as well. Seeing this, the maid servants drown in oceans of prankish fun. Nagarendra speaks in such a way with the Sakis that Swamini cannot stay silent anymore. She forgets that she vowed not to speak to him anymore and suddenly tells him, oh, Go back to that girl that you love so much. Why are you staying here speaking all these clever words? The Sakis laugh and say, Radhe, now you have also spoken with him. Now you've broken your second vow also. Shemati complains, Friends, you are really so tricky. Why are you keeping this boy here anyway? Why don't you chase him away? How can I not react to his clever words? The Sakis say, Rade, we are just weak girls and he is an independent prince. How can we chase him away? You are a princess and this is your kunja. You alone will be able to send this boy away. Why are you falsely blaming us? When Radhika hears these words, she forgets her third vow also, and she pushes Nagara out of her kunja 
with both hands. The Sakis laugh and say, Oh Radhe, now you also touched him. Gone is your third vow. Shimati admits, Oh no, now I also touched him. Didn't you tell me to touch him? The Sakis laugh and say, We didn't tell you to touch him. We thought you would simply scold him. It is not our fault. Shimati says, Well, if I could not keep any of my vows, then what is the use of scolding him? Go and bring him back into my kumja. The maid servant laughs and laughs when she sees how hard it is for Swamini to maintain her mom. Thus ends the verse 231. Rathe, Rathe, Gaur.